Thank you, Shirley. I appreciate the very warm introduction. And we're going to go ahead and get uh, started in, uh, with a lot of the information. There's quite a bit of information to cover today. And what we're going to cover is we're going to cover what the uh, guidance, the FFIEC guidance actually says uh, regarding social media. We're going to also discuss some of the risks and challenges to uh, having a social media initiative within your institution. Um, share some common usages out there that we see for social media, including some specific examples that you may want to uh, look into at your leisure. And uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about what's next for social media, which you might call social media 2.0, um, soon to be probably social media 3.0. So to start out, the first question we really want to ask is, is what is social media? And, um, you know, we're not going to give you a 101 course on, on Facebook here. But what we are going to do is just kind of talk to you a little bit about some of the de facto standards uh, in B2B and B2C uh, social media networking sites and, and some statistics on those sites we want to share with you as well. Because we're all familiar with the acronym KYC, right? Know your customer. But in this case, it's KYA, know your audience. And we want to know where our audience hangs out if we're going to go ahead and try to connect with them. And, and the key word here is to engage with them. It's all about social engagement, and that's what we want to be able to do. So first thing we want to talk about is LinkedIn. And LinkedIn really is a, a B2B uh, social networking site. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn. It, it, it's fantastic for my business. And a lot of times what you want to do with LinkedIn is really uh, create a, an industry page, if you will, because you can network with people within your industry and you kind of create a hub for your business. You want to position yourself as an industry leader uh, with regard to whatever your you know, uh, respective discipline is. But if you take a look at it, 28% of internet users worldwide are on LinkedIn. There's 115 million of them in the US according to this social media update in 2014. The 2015 uh, report isn't out yet, so this is the most uh, current data we have. But you know, half of them are college graduate or have a college degree. And um, a third of them uh, make over 50K a year uh, almost half of them make over 75k a year and LinkedIn is very popular with groups so you can have not only only your personal uh, LinkedIn site and your company's LinkedIn site but you can also create groups and um, it, it can be very time consuming to do but at the same time if you're in uh, a B2B world uh, LinkedIn is a very good place to uh, engage your particular audience then we have Twitter um, very short messages, um, a lot of links. Uh, a lot of people are a little intimidated because it is almost like another language in a sense. But Twitter has really been embraced by a lot of different uh, uh, groups, whether they are consumers or whether they are businesses. Um, if you take a look at anything to do now, let's say, for example, with the NBA Finals or the NH NHL uh, Stanley Cup, everything is done you know, pretty much via Twitter today, from the athletes themselves, uh, you know, to the actual organizations and the companies associated with them. So Twitter, having a presence on Twitter is very important for your business. And it's not just about B2B, it's also business to consumer as well, too. So you have 236 million accounts in, in the U.S. And a lot of those people probably have multiple Twitter accounts. But Twitter followers are very um, loyal to a brand and they follow a lot of brands. Um, they use Twitter to find out about products or services. And the advertising revenue, as you can see, has grown tremendously. And also the mobile usage. Um, people really are using Twitter as a result of a mobile phone. They're not using it on their computer, per se. They really are using it on mobile, and mobile is what's driving it. And we're going to share some of that with you as well. The other thing is that it's typically a little bit younger audience. Um, you know, Facebook has, has changed, and, and that typically is a little bit more... Um, senior audience, if you will. As a matter of fact, the, the growth of users 65 and over on Facebook now represents 56%, uh, percent, um, very, very large amount. 87% uh, of the users are aged 18 to 29, um, 30 to 34. Now you can see this 50%, 56% of internet users age 65 plus have a Facebook account now. Um, so again, if you're talking to consumers and you want to engage consumers, you know, this is a place you're going to want to have a presence, uh, even though, again, the demographic here is changing dramatically. 